So let's take a second to look at something in our neck of the woods because I'm excited that finally, finally, we're getting some more word about Tamara Lynch. Um, she is the advocate, uh, one of the top organizers for the Freedom Convoy back in 2022. She was arrested. She was held on trial for uh, uh, mischief and and uh, colluding with the, uh, organizing the protest and um, the trial that just never seems to never seems to end. But they always try to you know fabricate a reason why they have to hold back the trial. So now, finally, we're getting some closure on this. Finally, um, there's going to be some results. Because this just seems to be preluding so long that they're trying to throw this on the rug. They're trying to get, you know, Canadians to ignore this situation that the Canadian government abusively um, attacked their own citizens during the Freedom Convoy, arrested her, and uh, dissolute people from their, uh, their rights and freedoms as Canadians. Their ability to protest, their ability to peacefully organize together peacefully assemble uh, Canadians of all walks of life, regardless of how you feel about the mandates, regardless of how you feel about COVID, how they handled the situation was atrocious and a violation of everyday Canadian rights and freedoms that our charter is supposed to protect. That was under Justin Trudeau that he was doing that, let alone the fact they were freezing bank accounts. So this article from chat news today um says the final chapter of the freedom convoy organi organizers begins with closing arguments so they brought back in tamara lynch and chris barber one of the two heads of the organization uh that brought the freedom convoy to ottawa and finally we're getting some sort of conclusion to this some some sort of uh result and some sort of awareness to this. Because it just seems like we we first heard about it. They went to trial. Then they tried to cover it up. Then they tried to make excuses for holding back. Now we're finally getting somewhere. So it says the long drawn out criminal trial of Freedom Convoy organizers Tamara Lynch and Chris Barber is winding down as lawyers prepare to deliver their final arguments this week. They were among several organizers who brought a huge number of demonstrators and big rig trucks to Ottawa in 2022 to protest pandemic era public health restrictions and vaccine mandates. Their criminal trial began in September of 2023 and has been plagued with delays that have dragged the proceedings on for nearly a year. Lynch and Barber are both accused of mischief, intimidation, and several charges related to counseling others to break the law. Barber also faces the charges of counseling others to disobey a court order. As part of its closing arguments, the Crown intends to prove the two conspired in lockstep to organize a legal protest and that evidence against one of them should apply to both. Lynch and Barber's lawyers have argued throughout the trial that organizing a protest is not an illegal activity and is protected under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms which is something that everybody is addressing when it comes to this. And again, regardless of how you feel about any sort of protest, whether it's about this, whether it's about the pro-Palestine protest, whether it's about uh, the protest, you know, anti-Trudeau or uh, just any, any one of those protests, regardless of how you feel about that, they have the right, they have the ability. That's the principal matter of the charters and rights and freedoms. Like regardless of how you feel about that particular demonstration or what they're representing, they have every right to do it. Just like you have every right to have your opinion. You have every right to say what you feel about that particular protest. That is the whole purpose of having charter and rights and freedoms. And if you don't have that principle, then you don't respect the charter and rights and freedoms. If you're trying to cookie cutter and say that, well, this person uh, should be able to f speak freely, but this person isn't because they're, I don't like what they're saying. Then you don't have, you're not, you're not for free speech. It's a simple matter of protecting that principle. So that is why I've been, you know, trying to follow the story as much as possible. 
like I said, they've been trying to cover this for such a long time. Um, oh, I thought there'd be a little bit more to the story, but uh, I guess since they're starting closing arguments, we won't know about this. So uh, we will follow this story as much as possible and, and get you more updates because this is something that should should be main national headlines. This is something that even should be international headlines at this point. So the fact that the Freedom Convoy got the media coverage that it did. Um, I know there was a lot of, you know, misinformation when it came to saying that it was filled with right-wing Nazis and white supremacists, and they were trying to alter images with a swastika on it. Like, it was just chaotic how much the media was trying to pander uh, from the initial uh, grassroots movement of why they were doing this and trying to pander away from that uh, to pose to to keep that agenda of big pharmaceuticals. It's just it, it was just amazing um, that it did get the attention it got the attention that it did. Um, a lot of it had to do with social media. A lot of that had to do with people like Rebel News and uh, True North News here in Canada. You know, going to Ottawa and actually interviewing the people, which I did not see in any other legacy media outlet. I'd never seen you know, a CBC reporter interviewing people on the streets. I didn't see anyone from CTV or Global News, any of these outlets. But they had a lot to say about how they felt these people are. They felt like they were white supremacists, but are they? No. When you look at the actual video of people on the streets, there was Canadians of all walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different ethnic ethnicities, all different religions, all different sexual orientations, none of that mattered to them because they all came together to realize that these mandates are atrocious to everybody. It was atrocious to every, every person that felt thrown under the bus under this corrupted government, under Justin Trudeau, Christian Freeland, and Health Minister Theresa Tam, who threw this country under the bus and still continued to do so. They're still trying to threaten more people by closing their bank accounts in, in this day. After after everything that's happened with COVID, after finally telling people that, hey, we were kind of wrong to lock everything down and tell you to go screw off, go pound sand while you lost your job, while you lost your business, while you lost your ability to get a proper education. Even after all that, they're still threatening more people by shutting down their bank accounts. Because now they have the ability to just do whatever. Oh, we got we now we can shut down bank accounts for criticizing, you know, our policies. We can shut down a bank account for uh, not being okay with gay people. Like it's just, it's unbelievable how far this has gone. So, thank God that we're finally bringing this back to attention. And like I said, we will try to follow this as much as possible. Um, you know, I've read the book that uh, came out with Tamara Lynch, and it's actually a fascinating read. It's fascinating to see that this is not just some country bumpkin from uh, the prairies just doing this for, you know, rebellious means. Like, she is a smart person. She's a very smart, talented uh, woman and actually a fantastic singer. If you ever see her perform live, it's kind of remarkable. Um. But she did this not just not for herself, not for uh, people in her community, but she did this for the country that got screwed over um, because the, our government has been taken over by criminal cartels of big pharmaceuticals that have taken this globe internationally by storm and corruptly lied to people and notoriously put us into a means of destroying humanity. And that's why they did what they did. That's why they stuck, stuck up their chins, went to Ottawa, brought the trucks in, brought people together, and organized people on class lines to say that enough is enough. We're not going to be taken advantage and used as lab rats for a failed medical experiment. But because it's on YouTube, I'll say the vaccines are very safe and effective. Uh, go check your local health advisor. 
for any details on that. <laughs> um, but kudos that finally we're gonna see something uh coming out of this because this has gone far far too long, far too long in this situation, and who knows if this will become victorious or if they're going to just try and do some altering of, of this crazy nonsense and make it even worse than it is.